Day six. Some of the things you're going to need are the things that we always use. We got some chairs, we got some couch cushions, maybe a stuffed animal. Ooh, you know what we do need is a coin. I can't remember what I did with mine, but at some point you're going to need a coin. Okay? So when I find it, we'll make sure that we use our coin. All right? Maybe some stuffed animals. Um, if you have a mat, this is when you might want to break it out. I don't have one right now because we're going to bring it in a little bit later. But just make sure that it's somewhere uh, close by. You want to make sure you're doing this in a big open space. You don't want too much stuff around you. We want to stay safe. Okay, once again, I'm Coach Tony. I'm with Ninja Monkey Gym. Today's class is sponsored by Tumble Track. They're absolutely amazing. I've been so thankful and grateful for the opportunity to be able to connect with you all and have a great, meaningful experience. We're hosted by Gemini Gymnastics here in LaGrange, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Um, we've been thrilled to be doing this and we can't wait to do it a little bit more. Before we get started, I just want to give a little shout out to Nessa in Twin Falls, Idaho. Thank you so much for watching yesterday. Thank you so much for your comment. Um, you're the winner of our prize today. We're going to send you a Tumble Track uh, t shirt. Um, we're also going to do another contest today. Stay tuned a little bit later in the program. We're going to talk about that and, and see how maybe we can uh, 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 win a sectional beam for inside your house. It's going to be great. We're going to get to that a little bit later. First, I've got my badge band on. I'm going to try and earn some badges today. Um, these are super cool. You can do character badges and creativity badges. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to Ninja Monkey Box on Facebook. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but Ninja Monkey Box on Facebook. But first, let's get our warm up going. We're going to do a dance party. So, we're going to do some freeze dance. All right, we're going to do it for two minutes. And every time I hit play, I want you to dance. And every time I hit pause, I want you to freeze. Now, this is really, really easy for you. Here's your challenge. Every time I hit pause, you're going to want to be in a challenging position like this. So when you're dancing, make sure you're using your whole body to get jamming, okay? If you're just kind of dancing small, dancing tiny, when I say freeze, that's not going to be very challenging, right? But if you're getting loose, look. Well, that's going to be a little bit harder to freeze on, okay? So challenge yourself. Are you ready? Freeze dance. Let's go. Get big, people. 
Did you freeze? Uh, oh no! We've lost our freeze dance. Come back to us, freeze dance. Did you breathe? talking about our first batch, which is our creativity batch. Yeah? I love dancing. And anytime I get a chance to dance and be creative, I want to take it. So I'm going to give myself a little creativity badge to go with my other ones. Look at all the other things that I've learned. Wow, that's just from this week. That's amazing. Okay, now it's handstand week at Home Nastics. So, that means all week we've been talking about handstands. We started at the beginning of the week doing a little bit of basic material. Yesterday we talked about shaping, how to do a nice handstand that's nice and stacked, nice and vertical, just like when you stand, right? Today is definitely going to be our most challenging one yet. We're going to do handstand walking, okay? It is going to be a little bit challenging. And in fact, some of the things that we're going to do today, you're going to need to have a handstand to do. Now you don't have to have a great handstand. You should be able to go up and come down with control. And you'll still enjoy all of the exercises. But even if you don't have a handstand, we're gonna get you into the mix too. In fact, go grab your grown up and bring them along. Because what we're gonna do if you don't have a handstand is we're gonna get them involved and we're gonna do a cooperative experience between parent and child. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but first, Lots of handstands means a little bit of warming up. So let's put our hands together, get our wrists going. Ooh, excellent. Massage it a little bit. Yeah. We want to get some blood and some energy in that space. Very good. Let's take our hand, put our thumb down, grab the back of our hand, pull it in. Excellent. It kind of looks like a weird turkey. Let's try the other hand. Thumb down, hand, pull it in. See my weird little turkey head? Yeah? Ooh, stretch it out, stretch it out. Oh, very good. Let's put our hands on the ground. Do some circles. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, fingers the other way. Yeah. Rock it out a little bit. All right, shoulders, definitely get the shoulders. Wake, excited, other arm, forward, backward, other arm, yeah. How about some twists? Woo. Woo. Now, if you're doing this one and you're bonking into somebody or something, you don't have enough space, man. You gotta spread it out, okay? Make sure you got lots of space around you, yeah? Let's do a deep squat. I call these sumos. Good. Let's we'll straighten our legs, hands down, head down. Woo! Okay. Feel energized, stretched out, ready to go. Now, before we get into handstands, let's make sure we understand a little bit about how we walk on our feet before we try to walk on our hands. So if I'm standing here, right, and I want to take a step, if I just pick up one foot, what do you think happens? Oh, I fall. Same with the other side. Oh. So if I'm going to take a step, what I first have to do is I have to transfer my weight onto one foot. Then I can pick this one up and I don't fall, right? I got to transfer my weight onto the other foot and then I can pick this one up and I don't fall. So if I want to walk on my hands, the same thing is true. If I go to pick up my hand in a handstand and I don't transfer my weight, 
then I fall. So if I want to pick up one hand, I've got to transfer my weight onto the other one. So if I go up, I've got to transfer it onto the other side. So let's practice that first. Let's try it on something kind of tall. Now I'm going to move this around because there's no space behind this wall for me to put to do what I need to do. But if you have space, there's no need to move it. We're going to do what's called a high plank. A high plank are when my feet are above my shoulders. Now you can do a really high plank or you can do a kind of high plank. For me, it's going to be kind of a low high plank, but that's okay. Do whatever you feel safe with. I'm going to put my hands down. I'm going to put my feet on the back of this. And remember, we talked about this a little bit with planks. We don't want to be too low. We don't want to be too high. We want to be just right. Okay? Just right is when my shoulders to my heels are one line. Now, I'm going to practice my weight transfer. Touch, 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 touch. Touch, touch. How'd it go? Why don't you try it? I'm going to do it one more time, and I'm going to spell my name as I touch my shoulders. Will you do it with me? Let's do it. Ready? Here we go. C. challenge. Now, instead of doing it as a plank, I'm going to do it as a box pose. We talked about this yesterday. Box poses are when I try to make a box with my body, with a surface, and the ground. So it looks like a square. Okay? So my hands are going to be here. My hands to my hips are going to be one line. My hips to my feet are going to be another line. The back of this chair is going to be the third line, and the ground is going to be my fourth line. Now, if you're more flexible than I, you're going to have straight legs. I'm going to bend my legs so I can really focus on my shoulders. Before you do this exercise, though, let's talk a little bit about shoulder flexibility. One of my favorite stretches is a, uh, is a child's pose. Okay, to do a child's pose to stretch out your shoulders, you're going to put your booty on your heels, your hands as far out as you can, and then try to put your armpits on the ground with your chin up, like this. Whoa. If you want more of a stretch, lift your booty up a little bit higher and push your shoulders down more. If you want more of a stretch, find something that's raised. Put your wrists on it. Put your booty out a little bit. Now you don't want your back arched like this, what we call cow position. You want to try and flatten your back. So lift your ribs up and turn your hips under. And now try to put your armpits on the ground. That's as much as I've got. I wish I had more, but. Now don't go so far that it hurts. Just go far enough that you feel like you're opening your shoulders up and you're waking up your muscles. Keep those elbows straight, straight arms. Oh, that felt good. Okay, now let's try and take that same feeling and put it into our box pose. I'm gonna put my hands down. I'm gonna put my feet up on a raised surface that's steady and safe. Then, I'm going to try and do the same thing with my shoulders. My booty goes up and my shoulders open. Whoa! You got it? Okay. Now, let's try to do that with our shoulder touches. So we open up and do our shoulder touches. Let's do it. Ready? Open up, shoulder touches. Transfer, 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 transfer. Open, 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 arms straight. How'd you do? This is the best way 
to practice having open shoulders and transferring weight from one side to the other safely. That's the key, right? You want to be able to practice it in a way that you don't do what I did in the beginning where you pick up a hand and go <coughs> Right? Okay, we're gonna move on. That's a great thing to practice. If you're really serious about walking on your hands, maybe do 20 of those a day, and in a month, you're gonna be walking around your house no problem. Hopefully not bumping into your brothers and your sisters or your dog, because that would be sad. Let's put the chair back. What? Okay, now that the chair is back, let's practice some of our handstand walking exercises. I've got an ottoman here, I don't need that. So I'm gonna pick it up and get it out of the way. Now I've got some more space, but I don't have a mat. So let me grab them. Ooh, I don't need these chairs either right now. Let me put them against the wall so I have a little bit more space. Whoa. Today, we're gonna use these build -a mats These are awesome because you just assembled them. And you can make whatever shape you want. I was kind of boring today and I just made a rectangle. But if you really wanted to, you could take these mats and you could make a zigzag pattern or a square or maybe super long or maybe super wide. Build a different one every day. That would be awesome. Today, I just wanted something a little bit bigger than the normal unfolding mat, so we use this one. Okay, now we need something to play with. I just grabbed a bean bag. You can use anything you want. You could use your stuffy, you could do a book. It's up to you. We're going to put it right in the middle. Now, before we go on to our next exercise, I should probably practice my handstands. So let's do three together, okay? Remember, when we do our handstands, we want to do a nice leaning lunge, lever, kick. There's one. Let's do a couple more, get ourselves nice and warm, okay? Lean, two. That one was a little short. Hopefully my next one will be more vertical. That means straight up and down, okay? That's the goal. Can you be vertical? If you can't do a handstand, just practice your levers, okay? Levers look like this. Super good. Doing those are really gonna help your, build your handstand strength, okay? And your handstand confidence. Let's do one more good handstand. Leaning lunge, straight body line, lever, kick, handstand. All right, now, the first thing that I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna get on my hands, and I'm gonna see if I can touch the bean bag and come back to my handstand, okay? I'm not gonna walk, I'm just gonna try and touch it and come back and not fall. Let's try, you ready? Um, maybe it's better if I face this way. Let's see. Touch and then back. Touch and then back. How'd you do? It was kind of hard, isn't it? Yeah? This is a great game. You can see how many touches you can do. Touch and then back. Touch and then back. Yeah? Let's try it one more time. Touch. Touch. Do you see that weight transfer? I take my body and I shift it over to one side. It's gonna be really important later, okay? That was pretty good. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's try some shoulder touches. Now instead of just touching something in front, I gotta get all the way up to my shoulder. This really takes a lot of shifting the weight. Make sure you're really focused on, I'm gonna put all my weight on this hand so I can pick this one up. Otherwise, you're gonna be like a tree in the forest. Okay, so try to stay vertical, push, touch, push, touch. You got it? Let's try it. Really challenging. Make sure you got lots of space, hopefully a mat. 
All right? Touch, 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 touch. How'd you do? Oh, well, that's pretty good. The first two, uh, uh, the third one is when you know you got it. If you can do three, then you're on your way. Anything above three is excellent. So be super patient with yourself. If it takes you a week to get over three, that's okay. Keep at it. The more you practice it, the better you're going to be at walking, and the better you're going to be at shoulder touches. If you can do this exercise, walking is super easy. Most people try to start walking before they figure out how to shift weight. And then instead of walking, they're just kind of falling like this, right? You see people do they stick their heads out, they kick their feet over their head, and they just, ah, trying to just make it happen like this. Ah. And maybe they get three or four steps in, right? But they didn't actually walk with control. The walking with control, that's the fun part. That's the part that makes it so that you get to choose what you're doing on your hands. Right? If you think about a baby, they're just kind of falling. Right? You don't want to just fall. You want to decide to go that way. Or that way. Right? The way that you make those decisions is you make sure that you post, and then you lift your hand and place it where you want to. Not just where it works. Okay? So, now that we have that in mind, let's try to actually walk, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on that side, and I'm gonna choose how many steps I'm gonna take. Let's say three. I'm gonna do three steps and then come down with control. That's how you know you got it. If you do three steps and you say, ah, and then you fall down, well, you're not making any choices you're just hoping for the best. So make the choice beforehand and then try to commit to it with control. Like this, I'm gonna do three steps and then I'm gonna come down nicely. Okay, here we go. Leaning lunge, lever, one, two, three. With control down, like that, yeah. Try four, okay? Leaning lunge, make sure your chin's not sticking out. It's actually gonna put extra pressure up here. It's gonna make it more difficult. Instead, stretch your toes in the direction that you wanna go, right? Okay, so let's try. Leaning lunge, lever, kick. One, two, three, four, and down. Pretty good. Okay, let's try five. This will be our last try to get. Five steps, here we go. Leaning lunge, shrug, lever, kick, look, look, ah. One, two, three, four, five. I did it. Save that one. That was rough. Okay, every day set goals for yourself. I'm gonna do three steps today with control. I'm gonna do four steps today with control. You're gonna build and build and build and build until you get to 10 steps, 11 steps, 12 steps. Yeah, you wanna actually make the goal for yourself and then achieve it instead of just winging it because then what's gonna happen is some days you'll do 12 and some days you'll do four. Instead, set your benchmarks and really try to achieve them, okay? Now, I feel like I learned a lot on my handstand walking today. So, I've definitely earned my skill badge. It's handstand week, that's what we're working on for our skill. So I'm gonna give myself my skill badge. Boom, look at that. Now it's Wednesday and all my badges are still there. Look at that, so cool. Okay, 
So now we've done our skill challenge, and we did it on our build a max. The next thing we need is we need our strength challenge. We've done a lot with our shoulders and stuff, so we're gonna give those a break, right? Let's do some leg lifts. Now I'm gonna push this out of the way. Just a little bit, because what we're gonna use is our big chair again. You can also do this with a couch. I'm gonna lay down flat, I'm gonna put my hands under the couch, and I, or under the chair, and I'm gonna try and touch my toes to the couch cushion. But when I do that, I wanna make sure my legs stay straight and strong. Instead of lifting one leg and then the other, I'm gonna lift them both at the same time, okay? Leg lifts. Let's do 10, okay? We're gonna do 10 together. All right, let's get ready. Hands underneath. Legs are straight and strong. I'm gonna take my ribs, and just like that turtle back shape, I'm gonna press them down so that my back is flat against the ground. And I'm gonna touch my toes up to the couch cushion. Ready, let's do 10. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and my strength badge for the day for my 10 leg lifts. Those are great. They get your tummy and your legs nice and strong. All right, there's my strength badge for the day. We did planks, we did leg lifts, and we did our pistols yesterday. Remember, those are the ones where you go down and come back up. If you haven't tried it yet, go back and watch yesterday's video because that one's a really fun challenge, okay? Now we're gonna get this back in. Folks, if you don't have a badge band, that's totally fine. Check out the comments or back through the feed on Tumble Track, and you can see we actually have a checklist for the different things that you've worked on today that you can check off for yourself. Yeah? So even if you don't have one of these guys, you can still write it off. All right. Now the game. <laughs> okay, handstand walks, that's all we're doing today. So we're gonna talk about how to make handstand walking a game. Awesome. All right, here we go. We got our books. We got some stuffed animals. Maybe the rings. Let's get one more book. I like this one's got a monkey on it. <laughs> okay. Woo. This is going to be a super challenge. I'm going to try and walk on my hands from one side to the other. Now, if this is too difficult for you, this is where you grab your sibling or your grown-up and you get a chance to play the game together. Does everybody know how to do a wheelbarrow? Yeah? A wheelbarrow is where somebody else holds your feet like this. <laughs> right? And they hold your feet up here and zoom you around like a little wheelbarrow, right? So you're kind of like, ah! okay? You can do this same exercise as a wheelbarrow. Now, if you're a super advanced thinker, you can actually have a wheelbarrow shape where you're in your box pose. Remember that? Where your hips are up over your hands. So instead, you're kind of like in a weird handstand shape walking. That's the best. That's gonna get your shoulders working exactly the way you would for handstand walking, okay? So, if you can't walk on your hands, that's totally fine. Grab a grown-up or a sibling, they hold your feet, you walk around and zoom. If you're an advanced thinker, do it in your box pose, Woo. Okay, but for me, we're gonna do this exercise like this. I'm gonna start on this side. Remember, you need lots of room for this. I gotta get from one side to the other, and I can't touch the ground, I can't touch this with my feet, and I can't touch any of my 
obstacles with my hands. Okay? So you can go over them, you can go around them, you can go through them, you can't touch them. All right, here we go. Ready? I made a simple mistake. My ottoman's over there. I thought I put it far enough away, but I didn't. So I kicked it on my way up. Don't be me. Make sure you got lots of space. Take two. Here we go. <laughs> Don't touch it. I did it. Now the next time I could move all these around. Make it a little bit different, right? Leave this up and see how many ways you can go through it. Super challenges. Are you ready? I've got two super challenges for you. One is, I gotta do it on this side. Shoot it over here a little bit. Can I do the same exercise? Oh, you know what? I'll just do it like this. I don't know if I got it, friends. We're gonna see. Can I go backwards? this is you can make it even harder. Just stack up the books. But be really careful because those books are going to tip. So I like to start now with one book. Okay? Come on up. Up. Oh. One. I can't do one. Let's try again. a bit of courage. So I'm going to give myself a courage badge. But that was kind of scary. I'm not going to lie to you. Didn't know how it was going to go. I conquered the day. I get a badge. Nailed it. Now if you want to know more about these cool badge bands, check out Ninja Monkey Box on Facebook. And you, what you get inside of that box is a cool class like this. Uh, a lot of uh, more stuff from Tumble Track um, on their Tumble Track Facebook page. This has been hosted by Gemini Gymnastics. We love having you. Hopefully, we get a chance to see you at the same time tomorrow. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Looking forward.